Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another expression of your sweet love over our lives. And thank you, O oh God, for giving us another chance. Father, you brought us through 2019, and God, you ushered in a brand new year, another decade to begin. And Father, we're standing on top of the ground, and the ground is not laying on top of us. We say thank you, God. So that mean, Master, you're not through with this yet. You still got some things you want to work through our lives to edify and to build thy kingdom. So, Father, today would you touch all those who are sick, all those who are suffering, the families who are in a bereavement state, we lift up the Kamani family to you, the Lewis family, the Hawkins family, the Bass family, and many more, God, who are struggling releasing that loved one. But we trust you. We trust you through it all. Now, Father, would you teach us today? Teach us to trust you even more. We pray this now in Jesus' name. And we say amen. And amen. And family, while you're standing, if you don't mind, we officially say good morning to all of you. And our message today, for those who are visiting for the first time, we're so glad that you're in God's house. Thank you for visiting with us today. I want you to know that you're already family, so welcome to the family. Inside that same bulletin that you have, on the inside to the right, there's a little place where you can put a name, phone number, and you could fill that out. And during our time of offertorial period, just place it in the basket. And the Lord's will, before 10 p.m. tonight, I will personally give you a call. If it's for nothing more, but to say thank you for being a part of our family. I think that's the least this pastor should be doing. But our scriptures family is on the back side of that program in Matthew chapter number 6. Starting at verse number 25. Let us read together, family. Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body or what you will wear. Isn't life more important than food and the body more important than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself, because each day have enough trouble of its own. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers and doers of his awesome word. Family, this message as we start the first Sunday of a brand new year is vitally important for us to focus in on the things that matters most to God. And I know we're living in a world where we are bombarded with just the chaos, chaos of trouble, family problems. We got issues. There's health, there's sickness, there's death all around us. There's challenges in our families. There are challenges on our jobs. And in the midst of all things, God still wants us to stay focused on him. Well, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, the entire chapter is a good book, a good chapter for you to read. 
when you read it in its entirety. That book opens up very candidly, and it opens up and it tells you how you ought to give, how you ought to pray, how you ought to fast, and also tell with you tell you how to handle the possession that God give you. But then the text that we want to focus in today, it deals with the very stresses of our lives. That's not a person in the room who don't have something that's pressing against your heart. There's something, it might not be gigantic, it could be very minute, but nonetheless, it still give you a cord, a sliver of stress in your life. And many of us, I would be willing to guess at least one third of us are on some type of medication. And sometimes we're just stressed out. And when you're stressed out and you start worrying and concerns get the best of you, anxiety get the best of you, then believe it or not, it starts taking away your peace. It, it, it takes away your joy. You used to smile a lot, but now you don't smile at all. There used to be a time when you used to be a fun person to be around, but now people avoid you because you're too stressed out. And when people used to be around you, y'all would have glorious conversations, but now the only time you communicate with them, you bring them down instead of bringing them up. This message is about an empowerment message to help you realize that you don't have to stress, you don't have to worry, you don't have to be concerned about what you cannot handle. One of the things that people need to get into their spirit, the things that challenge most flesh is people, places, and things. And Jesus began to write to deal with that. In that first verse in 25, it comes in. He says, I tell you, don't worry. He said, don't worry even about your own life. Don't worry about the things that you cannot control. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about clothing. And family, these are the elements, these are the five senses that we have operating at the same time. And that's the only thing they're concerned about are the tangible things in our world. People are concerned about the plight of safety. You know, people walk around in fear. You know, you can't even go to church and expect church to be a safe place. You definitely, when you're out and about, you're looking over your shoulders. And so that's always a level of anxiety. But he says, don't worry about food. Because if you remember in Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus was led into the wilderness and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and then at, at the end of his fast, Satan shows up. He know that Christ is hungry. He know that Christ is thirsty. And he tells Jesus, and listen, if you be the son of God, why don't you turn these stones into bread? But Jesus responded back to Satan, Satan, for it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So it eliminate the hunger pains. And then when you talk about clothing, we can get caught up on some clothing, y'all. We got a closet full of stuff. And what happened, we become fashion shows. Any place we walk and become our runway. And if somebody don't give us a compliment on my outfit and, and this, that, and the other, and all of those things are external. Clothing is not what you think it is. And then he goes in to say, well, look at the birds in the sky. They do not plant they do not harvest or gather seed but your heavenly father feeds them take care of them and aren't you and I worth a lot more than a bird surely God's going to take care of you 
And then he moves on to say, but oh you, ye of little faith. And family, I must share with you that people have minimized God to mortal man. The world all around us is pushing spiritual things aside. The church is for sale. The righteousness of God is for sale. People would turn their backs on God if it means putting a political dollar in their pocket. They would take the truth of God and erase the truth and call it a lie and say the word of God is not saying that. But I come by to tell you that it's very important that you do not minimize God. Don't worry about what's happening in Washington, D.C. That's mortal man. Don't worry about what happened in Austin in the State House. That's mortal man. Don't worry about what's happening at City Hall of Houston. That's mortal man. God is above all of it. Now, they won't meet your needs, but God says, I will meet your every need. The other thing about worrying, family, it takes away days and weeks and months and years off your life. And somebody here, you've got to get it in your spirit. Look at what you have on your plate. Look at what you're carrying. Is it something that you need to be carrying or is it something you need to give to God? For those of you who are visiting our church for the first time, can you do, do me a favor? I'm not going to have you stand, but just show me your hand. If you're visiting this church for the first time, bless you, 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 bless you. Well, this is for you because the other folks know what I'm about to say. I want you to get three boxes. When you go home, get two shoe boxes. Empty them out. On one shoe box, write your name on it. The other shoe box, write the name of Jesus on it. Then I want you to get a bigger box. And I want you to write the word trash on it. Because the truth to the matter is this, my brothers and sisters, 80% of the stuff that come to you belong in the trash. Many of you are carrying stuff in your box that's not even yours. You're tossing and turning through the middle of the night because of what somebody else is doing that has no control of you and you have no control of them, but they're stressing you out. Let me give you an example for those visitors here. And let's just say you go to your mailbox and Centerpoint Reliant has sent you a meal. Don't put that in Jesus' box. He's the light of the world, but you've been burning electricity at your own house. That goes in your box. You get a phone call, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so is sick. They got a test. They got a biopsy. They got to go to the doctor. They got some stuff going on in their life. They've been diagnosed with cancer. They got heart issues. They are diabetic. They're on dialysis. That's Jesus, boss. He's the healer. Two o'clock in the morning, you're sleeping soundly asleep, dreaming about the pleasant trees of a new day, a new day of dawning. You're just having some good sleep. The phone rings. Collect call from Harris County Jail. Boo! That's trash. Come on now, say amen. Many times, my sisters and my brothers, you're putting things in your box that should be in the trash. There's some things that need to go to Jesus. And if you want to live with Christ being first, you've got to pray every morning and say, Lord, give me a spirit of discernment. 
So as stuff is coming in my direction, I will have the kind of discernment to know what box to put it in. This is the honest truth, family. I use this principle. I don't panic no matter what's going on. Because I'm not him. I'm not the Christ. I'm not God. God is God all by himself. So I'm not going to take on stuff that's above my pay grade. So many times when I'm dealing with you, I'm trying to put you on the right track so you can put Christ first in your life so you can experience the joy of knowing that he got your back. Stop letting people ride your back while you're struggling. They may say, you know, you're cold, you, you're harsh. No, baby, I know what the scripture says. The scripture says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things you've been praying for, crying for. God is the one that's going to open the door for you. God don't sleep, he don't slumber. What he did for my mother, he'll also do for me. And what he's done for me, he'll also do for my kids. Can I help somebody else right now? No matter how much mom and dad love you, there's some things you got to do for yourself. And coming to Jesus is one of those things. Mama can pray, grandma can pray, they can keep you on the prayer list until you're dead, but it won't make one hill of beans if you don't open up your mouth and say, Lord, it's not mother, it's not father, it's not my sister, it's not daddy, but Lord, it's me. See, it's good to ask people to pray for you, but listen, why don't you pray for yourself? Why don't you fall on your knees and go to God yourself and say, God, I know it's been a long time and I haven't been faithful in my time with you because I know in my heart I haven't been right. But I heard today, I don't have to be right to come to you. So I'm coming just the way I am. I'm filthy. I'm dirty. I got some stuff in my life. But you're the healer I heard. I heard that you are a deliverer. And family, what he's done for one. He'll do for you. The other thing about God providing your daily needs. The reason why our grandparents, great grandparents lived a long time is not that they didn't smoke because they did. They even chewed tobacco. It's not that they didn't drink because they did. Because they were able to get fresh vegetables. They were getting fresh food. They were eating off the land. And God was supplying what they need daily. What they need. Fresh peas. Fresh cucumbers and tomatoes right out of the garden. And they live a ripe old age. The reality comes in, family. God want to meet your daily needs and why is that so important so you can stay on your knees every day and say God I thank you for meeting my needs today and God right now I'm putting my petition in for tomorrow I wish I had a witness right here and when you depend on God to meet your needs understand that God is not on nobody's timetable but his own how many of know how many of you know that God is an on time God God is an on-time God. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what your needs are. And so the other thing I want you to know, the only person that can keep you from the blessing God has for you, look in the mirror and you'll see who I'm talking about. The only person that can stop you from being blessed is the person you see in the mirror when you look at it. Come on now, say amen. No man, no woman, no this, no that can keep God from blessing you. Come on now, say amen. God don't have to go through nobody to bless you. God know what your needs are. Now let me go one more, if you don't mind. Understand the difference between a need and a want. You might need a car, but you, who said a Jaguar? A Ford Focus will get you to the same place. Come on now, say amen. 
Because many times we're looking at other people's stuff and we're getting a little discouraged, a little disappointed. But listen, however God has blessed you, if he's gave you just a one-room house, come on now, say amen, and one little restroom, one little dining table, one little couch, come on now, say amen. I wish I had a witness over here. Amen, amen. Be thankful for how God has already blessed you. Come on now, say amen. Because God knows for a moment that many of you can't handle an abundance. Learn to be thankful. Understand that God's going to meet your needs. Then you got to be careful about tomorrow and you got to be careful about yesterday. Tomorrow never comes. Yesterday can never be retrieved. The only thing you have is the moment. So you need to watch your attitude. Because your attitude is always in the moment. Watch how you talk to God. Watch how you conduct your life in front of God. Watch what God is looking at. You're always living in the moment. That's why they would tell you, do not put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Some of us need to change. Because we haven't put God first. We put a whole lot of things ahead of God. And right now we are scared to death. But I got some good news for you. God didn't sleep one wink while you were doing what you were doing. And he have your way out. He have your way out. But you got to seek him. What does it mean to seek him? When we were kids, and every now and then with the grandkids, or your own children, you might play hide and seek. When you're seeking somebody who's hiding from you, you got to kind of get up. You can't sit on the base and say, I got you. <laughs> when we played hide and seek, we played for real because we played hide and seek at night. You're talking about some good hide and seek. You can be standing right next to a tree that can't see you. Come on, that's good hide and seek. Well, when you're seeking God, that means you're looking for his character. You're looking for his presence. And, and you don't stop until you find him. That means you have a centralized focus just to have him. And when you seek him, it says, with your whole heart, and then you seek the kingdom of God in righteousness, it says all the things that you're desiring is going to be added to you. Don't ever again blame another person for why you have not been blessed. Don't ever blame another person. God is in charge of everything. And all he's waiting for you to do is to line up. I see some young people in here. I see some people that go to school. Some of you might be in high school in here, and some of you definitely in college. And by the way, for the college students who are headed back to school, when you leave this service, go to room 100. They want to talk to you. They got something for you. I see some young people in here. Let me just tell you how to stay blessed. Every morning when you get up, make your bed and stuff up. Clean your room up. You got your own restroom, take care of it. Clean it up. Clean up the di di dishes for mama. Get the vacuum cleaner out and vacuum. Don't wait to be asked to do something. Take care of it in advance. You see, now, now you're being a blessing. Hello, somebody. 
You never have to ask mama or daddy for nothing when you're handling your business. And all your parents are waiting for you to do it. Just line up. And when you line up, you'll never have a want. They would give you stuff without you even asking for stuff. You will find real favor. Come on now, say amen. That's the honest truth. But when they got to holler at you for, didn't I tell you to go wash the dishes? Go wash the dishes, Godfather. Get something and hurt you. All parents are waiting for you to do is line up. And when you line up, it's a joy for your parents and grandparents to bless you. And please don't talk back. Please don't talk back. Please don't talk back. The only, and, and that's not even a good reason, but it's not good to talk back to your elders. Because that's a disrespect. And when the protocol is broken and you abuse the relationship because of disrespecting authority, then you lose favor. Sometimes you just got to be quiet. It's amazing how people that don't have anything got a whole lot to say. And the world has come in and say, it's not good to tell people to shut up. Who said that? But Emmett Fatida can put his book out there, Shut Up and Listen, bestseller. Why? Because he's proven that he know how to make money and earn the right to have a business and own a franchise and a team because he's doing it. Watch this. When God says, shut up and listen, that's what you ought to do. Silence and listen are spelled with the same letters. That's why the Bible says you ought to be slow to speak and quick to listen. But once you listen, you've got to apply. you got to apply what God gives you. Three things and I'm done. If you're going to put God first, you need to do three things. Number one, Put God first. And number two is like number one. Put God first. And number three is just like two and one. Put God first in everything. Family, put God first in everything. You want a healthy marriage? Keep God first. You want your finances to be blessed? Put God first. You want the angels to protect your children and grandchildren and family? Put God first. You want promotions on your job? Put God first. Don't put nothing ahead of the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you, Master. Hi, I'm Walter August. I want to invite you to join our email list and also plan your trip to Bethel's Family. Bethel's Family is an exciting church in the Fondren Southwest area of our city of Houston. We're impacting the local community and also global community. Bethel's Family have every ministry available to you that meet every family need through multi-generations. So whether it's a pregnant mom all the way to a senior adult and everything in between. And we're also one of the greater ministries in Houston that's meeting the physical, emotional, spiritual needs of the entire person. We not only impact people in the Houston area, but also we're national and also we're global. Join our email list by clicking the button below to plan your trip to Bethel's family. Thank you for taking this opportunity to visit with us here at Bethel's family.